So next, we're just going to go into the program mode, and we're going to do a simple uh, demonstration program just to show you how easy it is to program the control itself. And to do that, obviously, I'm in the DRO mode here. I would go into the program mode by hitting the DRO program key here. And as you can see, I'm now in the program mode. Um, just to give you an overview of the program screen, we have program functions, which allows you to load uh, programs that you may have saved, um, program steps here, uh, obviously shutting the control down again, save and discard programs, and then you have the run options functions here when you're moving uh, and actually running the part program itself. But in any given program, the first thing that I would probably do is put a tool in. So I'll select the tool key here and define the diameter of the cutter that I'm going to use in this program. I could give it a tool length if I knew what the tool length offsets were, if I'm using repeatable tooling, for example, um, or you can just touch the top of your part when you're running it to zero out your Z axis with the tool that you've defined. The plunge ramp angle uh, into the material is defaulted within the control, but if you have an angle specified, you can also define that. Here you can define the type of tool by pr pressing the soft key down here, tool types, and then just highlighting the type of tool that you're gonna be using. In this case, we'll say that we'll use a flat end mill. I'll press the enter key. So I've defined the diameter of the tool as well as the type. And the next thing might be to define spindle information. If the control is configured to the spindle inverter of the machine through the AMI function, which is an option to the control. Here you can select turning the spindle on forward or reverse, and then obviously selecting a spindle speed. The tool position here is a position in which the table would move to to get the part out of the way to actually be able to change the tool from one tool to the next. And then here you're defining if it's actually required to change the tool or not. So at a minimum, I just have to define the diameter for the tool step and potentially the type of tool that I'm gonna be using. So if that's correct, I can press the use key and that becomes the first step of my program. Now maybe next I wanna program a line, so I'll hit the line key and I just fill in the blanks. Where does that line start from? Where is it going to? Where is my Z uh, begin and end information? Um, here you can see that the control is telling me that I'm going to use that quarter inch flat end mill to machine this line. Here's my cutter compensation and then the feed in which I would machine that line. So for this line here, I'll just say that it starts at our datum zero. The length of this line is a two inch line. My Z begin, I'll say is a hundred thousandths above the part and maybe it's a quarter inch deep. My Z feed rate, I'll change to 15 inches a minute and the offset I'll say is right. And the feed rate in which I wanna machine this line will say is 35 inches a minute. If I press the use key, I get instant graphics. Here's the, the line that I just programmed. So maybe the next thing I wanna do is an arc. It gives me the endpoint of the line where I left off, so all I have to do is tell it where I'm going to with this arc. My Z axis information stays the same. What's the radius of this arc? in the direction is either clockwise or counterclockwise uh, and how I want to machine this arc out. I'm getting these help images over here <clears throat> and as you see as I scroll through the form itself um, it gives you some indication of what information is that we're looking for. If I press the more key here uh, you can see that the calculation of the center point of the arc was done by the control which is two and one, and the sweep angle is 180 degrees. So anything that the control calculates is in blue, and anything that we input as data, uh, it's in black. So if I use that, you get instant graphics, there's that arc. If we made a mistake, we just highlight the arc by pressing the arrow key up, highlight the arc, press the enter key, and then you would just change whatever it was that you made a mistake on and use that and now you see the arcs going in the right direction for this particular program. Now maybe I just want to do another line 
back down to my zero point and use that. And then maybe I want to do a blend in here between my first line and my last line. I can hit the blend key here and it tells me that it's going to blend steps four with two. I just have to put in the radius of the blend. We'll say it's a quarter inch. And if I use that, now maybe I want to do a whole pattern <clears throat> and I would change the tool and we'll say that we're going to use a hundred thousandths drill. So I'll select from the tool types a drill and I'll use that information and then maybe I'm going to do a hole pattern so I press holes I get a pop-up window what kind of hole pattern do I want to do here maybe I want to do a bolt circle so I can either hit the numeric key for the bolt circle or use the arrow keys and highlight to open the form so here's the bolt circle it's asking me where's the center of the hole pattern so it's given me the center of the last radius that I put in. So that's okay. I'll leave that the same. Now it's asking me for my Z axis information for the hole patterns or how deep am I going to drill the holes? Um, do I want to add a number of pecs? So it would take the distance, total distance divided by the number that you put in here. This can also be changed to a distance in job setup rather than number, but I'll leave this uh, just so that we're drilling the quarter inch complete. Uh, we are drilling rather than boring uh, positioning or, or tapping in this case. <clears throat> and then our feed rate for the Z-axis is how fast we're drilling into the material. The radius of this hole pattern we'll say is three quarters of an inch. Direction and how you want to drill the holes out. How many holes do you have? Here we can define a start angle and an end angle to create a segmented hole pattern. So I can say that my first hole starts at a negative 90 degrees and ends at a positive 90 degrees and if i use this information you can see the four holes that i created right now this is just saying new program because i haven't actually saved the program under program functions here we can press the save key um, we can also uh, look at the folder view itself and determine where we want to save this program. And for example, if I want to save this program in this show folder under Millpower Programs, I would press the save key now and we would give it a program name. And you use the arrow keys on the control console to navigate the keyboard and select the characters to save the program. Now you can see that this program has been saved as demo.mpt. And that just gives you a quick uh, overview of a quick uh, demo program to show you how easy it is to program the control.